losing 37 to 30 against the Cincinnati Bengals is bad. The way it happened is way worse. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers to go, your daily to go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on youtube.com slash all Steelers talk or anywhere you get your podcasts. And today I'm going to toss something out that might get a lot of hate. It might get some criticism. It might get some people that agree with me, but it's true. Everything I'm saying I've seen. And honestly, I'm taking a chance that guys in the locker room are going to be very, very upset with me and that maybe I get confronted. But if we're being honest, I got to bring this out because what I'm watching and what we're watching with the Pittsburgh Steelers these days is not who the Pittsburgh Steelers are or want to be. This is a team that is unrecognizable, a team that does not follow the same morals that teams of Steelers past follow. To be quite honest, this is a team that has given up. This is a team that understands how bad it is and a team that does not want to fight for each other. They want to win. They aren't winning. And they've given up. Again, to lose 37 to 30 to the Cincinnati Bengals is bad, but it's not terrible. And in a lot of context, it's the best game the Steelers have put together offensively all season long. It's the second game out of 28 that Matt Canada has led his offense to more or as much as 30 points. That's that's a check mark. That's a positive. It's the first game that Najee Harris showed consistency two times in a row. That's a plus. It's the second game Kenny Pickett hasn't turned the ball over. That's a plus. And George Pickens continues to shine. That's a plus. But at the end of the game, when things weren't looking good, when the offense obviously wasn't clicking and the second half just wasn't what the Steelers wanted it to be, people gave up. And it was very, very obvious that people gave up. You walk into the second half of you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and nothing's working. You're you're walking through the steps. The Cincinnati Bengals have made adjustments and they've shut you down and you can't make the adjustments to overcome that. And that's been a story of the Pittsburgh Steelers all season long. We're 11 games deep and through those 11 games, you've learned that Matt Canada is incapable of overcoming changes to the defense. If what he has planned works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. There is no, we'll figure this out in game. There is no in-game adjustments and Mike Tomlin's classic will be light on our feet does not apply to Matt Canada. It never has. That being said, you watch this team and they continue to fight in most games. You look at this and you look at the character and nothing changes. Najee Harris is still going 110% at the end of games. Kenny Pickett is still fighting for every yard that he can fight for. Deontay Johnson is catching footballs. George Pickens is catching footballs. Pat Fryermuth is laying his body on the line. There are people fighting. That is until Cincinnati. Week 11, the Bengals came to town. And in the second half, when three and seven was staring you right in the face, the Pittsburgh Steelers said, we're done. And they put nothing on the field. They gave up. I'm not the only one who saw it, and and I'm not the only one who will address it, and I'm not the only one who believes that the Steelers gave up offensively. You just watched this team, and you saw that people weren't trying at all. Kenny Pickett was escaping the pocket and extending plays and trying to do as much as he possibly can with the team down 10 points or 14 points, and no matter what he could do, Nobody was doing anything extra. He'd move outside the pocket and you'd look down the field and you'd see Deontay Johnson and George Pickens just standing around. Nobody was trying to get open. Remember those AB Big Ben days when you knew that if Ben moved out of the pocket, AB was going to be open because he wasn't going to stop moving. Those days are gone. Deontay Johnson didn't move, didn't even try to get open. There were times where he stared at, I watched him. 
I watched him stare at Kenny Pickett as Kenny Pickett moved to the right side of the pocket and escaped and got open. And Deontay Johnson just stood there and looked at him. George Pickens, George Pickens left mentally well before then. So much so that the Steelers, honestly, yeah, it would have taken a miracle and it wouldn't have been easy. And you would have relied on an onside kick that chances were you weren't going to recover. But crazier things have happened in the NFL. This is the National Football League and you play until the fat or and what is it? You play until the fat lady sings and well, they she didn't sing yet. George Pickens was wide open deep and Kenny Pickett finally hit him. And when I say finally, I mean finally. There were times left and right during this game where Kenny Pickett just totally ignored the fact that he had George Pickens lined up across one-on-one in press coverage with no safety help over the top, and he just decided, I'm going to go through all my progression before I realize George Pickens is wide open 30 yards down the field. Happened at least a handful of times. Kenny Pickett is, at this point, hitting an edge where you got to start thinking maybe he isn't it. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is that he finally hit him, threw it deep, and George was so mentally gone from this game at that point that he let that go right through his hands. And you're telling me, you're going to tell me that George Pickens, the guy that five plays earlier, jumped over somebody to make a catch that was so unbelievable that it was all over the internet that suddenly he can't catch a pass that is right in his hands when he's wide open, walking into the end zone? No. He drops that pass because he's not here mentally anymore, because he's given up. The Steelers' offense doesn't want to play the way they've played. They want success. They want to crave wins. They want to see their talent be used the right way. Right now, what they're looking at is an offensive coordinator that doesn't make any adjustments, and therefore, your chances of winning are very, very slim. A rookie quarterback who may or may not be it, and right now, it's looking more like he's not it than he is it. A running game that's finally getting going, but things are, you know, slow. And a defense that isn't helping at all. Nobody wants to play in Pittsburgh, and I don't blame them. At three and seven, would you want to play? Is there a motivation to continue to shine when you're down 37 to, what was it, 24 in the fourth quarter? There's no motivation there. There's no reason to keep going. This team doesn't have a future, and it's very clear this team doesn't have a future this season. And the Steelers haven't been in a position like this. And they don't know what to do. And Mike Tomlin might be the player's coach that he is, and he might know how to motivate men better than almost anybody in the NFL. But at this point right now, it's very difficult for somebody to walk into that locker room, walk into a team meeting on Monday, and say, listen, guys, we're three and seven, but this season is still very much worth fighting for. It's not. It is not worth fighting for. The Steelers season is over. We all know that. People have acknowledged that for weeks. The difference is that we are commentators. We are fans. We are analysts. We are reporters. We are not the people getting paid millions of dollars, living our dreams to be football players in Pittsburgh. And those people should be putting their heart and soul on the field. And they're not. It can't be easy when you're that good as a player and you're not that good as a team. It can't be easy to go into work knowing that the guy that calls the plays for you doesn't know how to run an offense and that everybody pretty much knows that he's the problem. It can't be easy to walk in and understand that your quarterback needs time before he's going to be good enough to get you the football. That can't be easy. And it can't be easy walking into a game week after week, understanding that this season is not one that's going to turn into a success. That's got to be the most difficult thing ever, especially for an athlete. But that's the target or that's the 
life. That's the dish that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been served. They put themselves in this pos- this position. And George Pickens didn't pick to be here, but Deontay Johnson did. And there's no reason that people should be giving up. They have plenty of reasons, too. You can't find motivation with Matt Canada at an offensive coordinator. You can't find motivation when your rookie second-round pick has overtaken your targets. You can't find motivation when your quarterback doesn't want to find you wide open multiple times during a game. And you can't find motivation that even when you score 30 points, you lose. But the Steelers got to find something, man. Because this is embarrassing. And their team, just like I said at the beginning of this, like I'm going to get hate for this. I could walk into the locker room tomorrow and people could know exactly who I am and come right up to me and say, what the heck? Why do you think we're giving up? You don't know anything about that. I don't. I don't know what those team meetings are like. I don't know what the passion and the drive is when you guys talk to each other one-on-one. I don't. What I do know is watching from the press box, guys gave up. Guys didn't want to be there anymore. Guys checked out. That's not the Pittsburgh Steelers that anyone is used to. But it's the Pittsburgh Steelers that are here. And that is a bigger problem than anybody believed they had walking into the season. And one they got to fix before they fix anything else.